because there was a uh, original documentary, um, I wanted to, I mean, I, I was very afraid and I knew that I would never be able to accomplish the realism that a documentary does, but I'm pretty good at that. I can get close, you know, so I wanted to, um, you know, but the big question I was asking myself the whole the entire time was, you know, why did I even need to make a movie if there was already a documentary that just talks about the story? So it wasn't until the main character told me that, you know, whenever she goes on the stage, you know, she really kind of forgets about, you know, the world, the, 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 her life. And, and she's just in the story of the opera, the actual story of the opera. And it's only when this, uh, the play is over, you know, she looks out the audience and she sees, oh, I have, you know, 30, 40 people. Oh, maybe I didn't make any money today. You know, that, that reality check. So I thought, wow, okay, that's really interesting. If I can, if I can actually get inside their head and show the audience, you know, not just to like, you know, so they're watching a play, but actually like get them into the, the, the story of the opera, you know, treat this particular story as an opera, then I can utilize some of the visuals, you know, that an opera, you know, would be, you know, like that's inside their head, you know, meaning that magic and surrealism, because that's all in the stories, you know, except that, you know, on the stage, you would just see like somebody, you know, you know, a bird, like a paper bird flying over the stage or something. So I wanted to feel, I want the audience to feel that. And, and when I started thinking in that way, you know, the world kind of opened up. So I knew that I had the realism of the documentary, which I needed to do to, to show that this is actually really happening. This is not just a movie where you can relax and, 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 it, you know, kind of just be like, oh, it's just a story. No, it's, it's real life. And like people are actually dealing with this situation. Um, but the surrealism sort of came, I wanted to, I was a big fan of, um, uh, Michael Pretzberger and, uh, was it Michael Powell? And, and anyway, Pretzberger and Powell, um, who, who has a, that they're a directing duo from England, you know, in the 70s called The Archers. And they have this film called The Red Shoe, you know, which was essentially a film within a film or a play within a film. And, you know, it, the story is all about a, uh, you know, a, a ballet called The Red Shoe that was being put on and, and the main characters of the dancer. And, you know, the film is just like a typical British film of that time. Um, up until the, the moment when they're actually putting on the ballet. And then like, you know, the, the lead, like the whole, like the lead character, I mean, like there's this little clown, you know, literally kind of like invites the audience to come into the play. And then the camera sort of zooms in and you're literally in this three dimensional play. You know, you're not no longer thinking of the stage, you're actually inside the world of the, the ballet. So that, and that goes on for like 15 minutes, you know, so that was kind of my, um, you know, high goal for what we can accomplish. Um, but of course, you know, like if you ever see that ballet sequence in the red shoe, I mean, it's quite amazing. It's, it's almost like they had somebody like Salvador Dali, you know, direct this little sequence. And then the film goes back to normal, goes back to just being a British kind of highbrow uh, movie, you know? So um, yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking in terms of sort of that, that those kind of visual elements.